The custom of making a drug goes back 5,000 years. It's a unique form of block printing, and it's an important part of the culture in southern Pakistan's Sindh province. The traditional method involves some unusual ingredients, like camel and cow dung. But these days, customers are buying cheaper, machine-made copies of these shawls. We visited the small town of Bitsha to see how one traditional Ajrak workshop is still standing. Imran Sumro started learning how to make Ajrak from his father when he was 10, and they still work together today. It all starts with stiff, pure cotton called kora. Workers take the cloth to a nearby stream for its very first wash. They slap the cloth against the riverbanks repeatedly to squeeze out any excess water. Every single step is done by hand. So it can take almost a month to make one shawl. Then it's time for the most famous ingredient, gisi. Camels used to be common in Pitsha, but these days, workers from a nearby town deliver the dung every day. It's mixed with water, baking soda and mustard oil to form a paste called saj. That's what gives Adrak its musty smell and eventually makes the colors pop. It takes a full bucket to soak 25 sheets. They dunk the fabric into the saj, then coil it again and again to soak up the paste. The cloth is soaked and dried at least four times before it goes back into the river for another wash. But they never let the fabric fully dry. After the raw fabric is treated for four to five days, it's finally ready to be stamped. One artisan creates the outline on all 40 pieces in the batch. There are only three to four traditional patterns that are still in use today. But the workshop can customize designs. A skilled block printer can finish 10 to 12 pieces in a day, but the hard work doesn't always pay off. A high-end shawl from Imran's workshop costs up to $50, but you can pick up a machine version for about $1. Still, many people can't tell the difference between real and fake a drug, but there are some signs. Imran says that's because they don't use any chemical dyes. For the next step called khat, workers fill the outline with black color. It starts to give the adrak its signature look. Then a worker stamps an herbal paste all over the cloth, so that dried cow dung can stick to the fabric. This process, known as kar, protects sections of the adrak that shouldn't be dyed. Now the fabric is ready for its first dye. 
Slowly, each adrug is dipped into this bubbly dye until it turns a deep navy. Workers take out the soaked sheets and lay them in the sun before they're washed again. The next stage demands a strong fire. Imran's father Muhammad fills a bhatti or clay oven with water along with alizarin pigment and an herb known as sakun. Then Muhammad repeatedly dips the adrak into boiling water. More and more pieces go into the bhatti. And eventually, they're all left to simmer for at least an hour. Imran checks the pot regularly to make sure each piece is fully submerged. Other pieces are dyed in smaller pots. The patterns start to appear. A worker lays out the adrak by the river the next morning. Then the fabric is dyed, block printed, and washed again to enhance the colors. Each step leaves its mark, with the stark crimson contrasting with the indigo, black and white. Archaeological records show that Adruk has been made in Sindh for over 5,000 years. It dates back to one of the earliest civilizations of the Indus Valley, where Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism flourished. Priest kings wore the fabric over their shoulders in the ancient city of Mohenjo-daro in Sindh. Today, shawls like these are sold throughout Pakistan, but Sindh is still the heart of the craft. There are about a hundred workshops in this part of the province that still make adrak the traditional way. Growing up, Imran learned about legendary adrak artisans, and some even belonged to his own family. But the glory days of this ancient craft are long gone. Cheaper, mass-produced shawls have taken over the market. To keep up with competition, Imran's family business has diversified. Another change? They've started selling directly to consumers instead of just to local shops, which kept some of the profits. The new business model has helped his workers too. Imran credits non-profit organizations for training his workers on different techniques. And he's hopeful that the Adrak will continue to be cherished by many future generations. Survive limitation